Hello, my name is Logan and I'm your host, The Mighty Pirate. In today's episode, I am going over how to play Alpha Strike. In this video, I'm going to give a rundown of various resources that are available to people who are playing Alpha Strike, and this is intended to give you uh, the tools you need so you can run your own game. The most important tool I'm going to have to share with you is masterunitlist.info. This is a tool provided by Catalyst Games, and the tool that you'll be using is after you go to the website, you'll click Force Alpha Strike Builder. And then in here, you'll just type in, let's say, uh, Griffin. You'll choose what type of Griffin you'd like to add, and it'll also indicate what year that that Griffin was made. So we're going to pick this one. And then we've added two griffins to our arsenal. Um, PV is indication of points value. This is the metric that you balance your game versus other games, or versus your opponent. So you both agree, let's say we're going to play 200 points, and you would go ahead and build out your force of whatever era mechs that you guys agree are allowed, calculate how many points it would be, and then... Um, you guys would bring those mechs to the table. Another thing you can do is adjust the skill. In Alpha Strike, the lower the skill is, the greater, the more accurate the mech. So as you see, the points value adjusted right here. So from 4 to 0 is almost doubling its points. So you can kind of use that as a scale to figure out what you want to do for your mechs, whether you want them to be really elite or just kind of average. 4 is average, and then 8 is green. But even though you put it to uh, green, it's still not that much cheaper than what it would be at setting for. So just try to keep that in mind. Um, some other tools that you'll have available to you is, well, most importantly, all the rules are going to be here in the Alpha Strike Commander's Edition. You can buy this from Catalyst Games, and it'll give you a PDF so you don't have to actually lug around the physical book. Um, I prefer a book, but a lot of other people just not down with that. Um, if you don't have the $40, there is the quick start rules, which are available on the downloads page from um, Battletech or Catalyst Games. So the Alpha Strike, or Alpha Strike quick start rules will have pretty much everything you need, as well as kind of like some primer to get you in the feel for the setting. But I'm going to go over how to play this game. Um, another tool that's really useful is uh, Death From Above Wargaming. They modify Alpha Strike rules a little bit because they play a lot of war games and they kind of want their games to be a little more streamlined. Um, if you go to their website, they have a list of uh, quick reference guides. And um, for the most part, they're pretty close to the original rulebook. And they list out all the changes that they made in the uh, House Rules version 1.1. So if you go to that website, um, Death From Above Wargaming or DFAWargaming.com, you can get a pretty good useful Alpha Strike like, uh, rules assistance, I guess is how I would describe it. So like if you click on um, the Quick Reference Guide, it'll give you a basic summary of what to expect. I know when a lot of people see these charts their eyes kind of gloss over, but the most important chart you really need to see is uh, the critical hit chart. Um, when you look at this, uh, we'll go over how this works, but um, you look at this first column, mechs, and then whenever you would cause internal damage you roll 2d6, refer to this table, and then that does a thing. Usually mechs don't survive a second critical hit, but if you do, every time you would cause a source of damage, so every time it gets shot, um, it you'd roll 2d6 here and then refer to this table. I know a lot of you old Battletech players are like, that's crazy table, but um, hold, your hold your judgments until we get to the end. Um, another tool I found that was pretty useful was also in the downloads, but... Um, the Battletech record, seat, record sheets. 
If you scroll down through this, it has uh, the rules for classic tech, but that's not what we're looking for. Um, this is for you uh, free to, free to play players. Check it out. Cardboard or cutouts. So you print these out, cut them down the uh, lines, and then fold them, and you've got a mech. Now even free players can play Alpha Strike, assuming that they can acquire 2D6. And a printer and a pencil? Yeah, printer and a pencil. Then that's really all you need to play Alpha Strike. Um, and the rest of this video is going to be covering how to actually play the game, how to read the cards. Um, when we look at... Ooh, here we go. Click print PDF and you can it'll show you your stat cards. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So to explain what this card means, um, this means uh, it, TP anyway type battle mech size two. This is also how much damage it does in melee. Target movement modifier, 2. This is what you'll add to your opponent's to hit roll when they're trying to figure out what to hit you at. Then we've got movement, which is 10 inches, because this is a true scale game and uh, an American game, so we use inches here. Though, if you have the Alpha Strike core rulebook, it gives you a conversion. Um, I don't know what that conversion is. Uh, this letter over here... J indicates jump, and that means you can jump that many inches. There's two ways to perceive this. I haven't really seen a clear definition. Um, you can measure from the base of the model up 10 inches and then set it up 10 inches from there. Or you can do the more cinematic version, which is as the bird flies, jump 10 inches and then uh, rotate your setting rotate your facing however you want at the end. Uh, roll is sniper. Um, rolls are not usually indicated unless you're doing an optional rule which would indicate for uh, lance formations. I tend to drop this rule because it creates uh, well honestly it just makes people min-max and so people will really favor certain mechs because some of these mechs will have rules that are beneficial to a certain tactic. I prefer to just ignore this rule. However, um, to each their own. Uh, there are additional rules about the role in the Alpha Strike uh, core book. Here is skill. This indicates what your base roll to hit is. So to explain the way that we roll to hit, all of your shots are combined into a single 2d6. For a lot of players this is confusing, but for new players this makes a lot of sense. So you will start with your skill value. You will then add your opponent's movement modifier. Then you'll add your range modifier. If you're 6 inches or less to your target, there is no range modifier. If you're over 6 inches but less than 24 inches, it's plus 2 to the shot. And then if you're over 24 inches but less than 42 inches, you add plus 4 to the shot. This indicates the rolls of short, which has a modifier of plus 0. This mech would do 2 damage at that range. Medium, which is a plus 2 to hit this mech would do 2 damage at that range. And then finally, at a plus 4 to hit, long range, this mech would do 2 damage. This mech has no overheat value. The way overheat works is, before declaring your shot, or after declaring target, but before rolling the 2d6 to hit, you declare whether you will overheat. You will then increase your overheat scale by that number, and increase your damage by that number. This is only applicable at short and medium range. There are 
optional, there are additional rules on some mechs that would allow this to happen at long range, but by default, overheat can only be done at short or medium, and the only way to have the heat scale go down is to forego your shooting. This is how much armor, how much damage you can take before causing a critical hit at chart. This is how much internal structure damage you can take before your mech is removed as a casualty. In this mech's case, <laughs> no pun intended, it has case. It is a special rule that would prevent ammo explosion on the critical hit chart. So the, if that result happened, this mech would not, exp not be removed as a casualty. Alternatively, instead of doing a direct line of sight shot, as per the short, medium, or long range, it can do one point of damage indirectly with the same penalties of short, medium, and long, and an additional minus two penalty for firing indirect. If it's firing indirect, there needs to be at least one mech that can have line of sight on it, and that mech will suffer an additional penalty of one to hit if it shoots its weapons. So that in essence is Alpha Strike. This table over here indicates that if you would receive a crit past the amount of boxes that are available, the mech is also removed. So that's Alpha Strike. I'm going Hello, um the this is the demo that we're going to go over for how to play Alpha Strike. What you're gonna need is 2d6, tape measure in inches. I like having a laser pointer, but not required. Some mechs, the Alpha Strike printout for where the mechs. Um, normally you're supposed to play on a four x four table, but it's early in the morning and my game store is closed. So we're gonna play here on a table with that is terrain. So we have team archer cataphract and we have team archer rifleman. These two forces are gonna battle to the death here on my table. Start of the turn you're supposed to throw 2d6 to determine the initiative order. The dice roll that is lower will go first. Going first in this game is always a disadvantage. So for team cataphract result is 10. For Team Rifleman, result is 9. So Team Cata or team Rifleman will go first and deploy first. I put a guy here. Though, visions, though missions may vary, it's typically considered that within the first 6 inches of your table edge is considered your deployment zone. And you can put your mech anywhere in there. So I'm going to put this mech over here for Team Rifleman. And I'm going to put the other archer off in the corner. Finally the team rifleman is going to stack up next to his archer and team cataphract is going to take the long flank. So here is our initial deployment. So the game is built into two phases. Move the mech, shoot the mech. So we start off by moving the mech. How far do we move the mech? Well let's refer to our alpha strike data card. The archer has a movement value of 8. However, because we're so far away, I'm going to put the archer on a sprint action, which is move and a half. If you perform this action, a, you will effectively increase your movement by 50%, so move and a half, but you will forego your shooting action. I sprint the archer 12 inches towards cover. Alpha Strike uses a true cover system, meaning that if a mech sees another mech, then it has line of sight. As of right now, this cataphract doesn't have line of sight on the archer. I'm going to show you a bird's eye view to indicate that. See, laser pointer is very helpful for this reason. However, the cataphract still has the ability to move, and we're going to do so. 
Cataphract moves forward on a standard action, and the cataphract has a move of 8 inches. At the end of your move, you can adjust your facing however you see fit. The only facing that matters is the rear facing. If you have shot to uh, the rear facing, your damage is increased by one at all ranges. Team Rifleman, with the Rifleman, will make a sprint action. The Rifleman will have an effective move of 15 inches. Sometimes determining when an, a mech has line of sight or not, it can be tricky. In my opinion, there is three types of cover setting. There is no cover, partial cover, and heavy cover. Light cover is at least 50% of the mech obscured. Heavy cover is at least 75% of the mech obscured. So, with this in mind, try to come up with an agreement between you and your opponent on the definition of the cover. If you can't agree on it, roll 2d6. Then, the person who has the highest dice roll will be right in that instance. Play the game. Have fun. Finally, Archer on a sprint action. So, now that we've moved all the mechs, we're going to check for line of sight and see if there's any shots. So we're going to start with the Cataphract because he has the only mech that is capable to shoot right now because he's the only one who did not perform a sprint action. So the shot that I'm looking for is from here to the uh, Rifleman. And since the Rifleman is at least partially obstructed, but not mostly obstructed, he's going to get a cover bonus of plus two. My Cataphract has a skill of two. So, my initial roll to need to hit is 2, plus my opponent's cover of 2, making the a shot now to 4. The Rifleman also has a movement modifier of 2, increasing the shot to 6. Finally, it's over 6 inches, meaning that the shot is another plus 2 to hit, needing an 8 to hit. Even though it's a difficult shot, the Cataphract takes a shot anyway. And on an 8, scores a hit. The Cataphract does 3 damage at medium range, meaning that the Rifleman will remove 3 circles from the, uh, the armor, or the A indicator, Oop. when it runs out of armor, it'll start ticking off of the S, or the internal structure. So right now, it took three points of outer armor. We're going to play one more turn to see how this shakes out, but for Team Cataphract, the roll for initiative is 11. Roll for initiative for Team Rifleman is a 12. So the archer is going to make a standard move. This archer is going to move. And he's going to try to position himself so he's only partially in view, giving himself a cover bonus. The Cataphract, hungry for its kill, is going to still go after the Rifleman. And it makes a standard move action, and then adjusts its pivot so it can see the uh, Rifleman better. Finally, the Rifleman's going to back up to try to protect itself and give cover to its archer friend. Unfortunately, it doesn't have enough move to get into hard cover, or really any cover, so it's going to be a being shot at unobstructed. Cataphract has clear line of sight on the Rifleman, and is going to shoot. The result is 10, and is scoring a hit. The Rifleman is going to have an internal structure hit, meaning that the Cataphract pilot will roll an additional 2d6, and then refer to the crit chart to determine what happens from there. This is a quick reference sheet I got a number of years ago, and used to be a product that was sold by Catalyst. It's kind of hard to find now, however, this critical hits table is what we're looking for. So we're going to throw 2d6 here and refer to this table. The result is 9, which is no critical hit. Damage doesn't go into effect until the end of the turn, so the order of firing sequence doesn't particularly matter. However, shots do need to be called before throwing the dice. So, the black uh, rifleman 
and the archer are both going to shoot on the cataphract. So starting with the rifleman, on a roll of a 7, the rifleman has a ballistic or a skill of 2, the cataphract has a movement modifier of 2, and the range modifier of 2, meaning, meaning that the rifleman only needed a 6 to hit, and 7 scores a hit. The archer will now fire, rolling a 6. Fortunately, it's the same roll to hit as before, meaning that it will also hit. Combined damage of the archer and the rifleman at medium range is 10 damage, which will exceed the cataphract's outer and inner armor, meaning that the cataphract will be removed as a casualty at the end of the turn. However, we have one last archer who's going to make his shot at the damaged rifleman with an indirect fire shot. When firing indirect, add an additional two to the hit. So let's see what the archer can pull off. On a result of a four, it's woefully out of range. So at the end of the turn, the cataphract will be removed as a casualty, and then it'll have to be a rifleman and an archer versus just an archer. On sequential turns, the player that has two models versus the player that has one model will have to move both of his models when he's required to move. This happens in an effort to try to keep the order of play a somewhat balanced. And that's how we play Alpha Strike. Thanks so much for watching, guys.